highest risk place for STDs. He also called anal sex essentially a battering ram. Um, pardon, pardon this discussion, but uh, he said, I'll, I'll read the entire quote, because it's just, I think there needs to be a way to convey this reality to young people. Because if young people are being taught that HIV um, is just, anybody can get HIV, which is true, but not being taught that certain behaviors are more likely to uh, induce HIV, I think that's not accurate teaching. So let me read this entire quote by, this, by a gay activist. Quote, just as your internal sphincter muscle involuntarily relaxes when feces enter your rectum, it involuntarily contracts when a penis or other object attempts to enter from the outside. An anal tear can occur during the initial phase of anal sex precisely because your partner pushes his penis through a closed sphincter. Think of his penis as a battering ram, one for which your internal sphincter is no match, unquote. And I'm sorry for that, uh, but... Does, uh, does there, the hymen not tear? Well, I think that... Um, but is, I mean, I'm just saying, it's, it, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. but, but there, so, there are... Well, I mean, this is not just a gay thing, because now we're seeing, I think, the, the factor of women, of men pushing anal sex on women, I think, is, is, a, is a growing thing. And I think it's that they're seeing porn, and they're watching anal sex as big in porn, and they're saying, I need that, I need something more, and they're pushing on women, and, I, and I've read, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't read a lot on it, but... There's a lot of uh, concern among women that guys are pushing this sort of behavior. And so this is not uh, just a thing against homosexuals. And again, not all homosexuals practice anal sex. Um, there was another quote by a guy named Jack Hart, who also was a gay activist. He wrote a book called The Gay Sex Manual, in which he said that, um, I don't, I'm sorry I don't have the verbatim quote here, but the quote was to this effect. There are certain factors that make, get, make gay men and their practices, highly, highly efficient transmitters of STDs. One of the factors he cited, and I don't know your name, but uh, was, the, was the number of partners. The gay men have the opportunity to engage in far more sex than straight men. That was one of his factors. But the other one is he cited two behaviors. One was anal sex, the other one was rimming. And rimming is, okay, here, this is, again, not pleasant, but oral anal contact. And so, you know, you can see, you can read the literature, hepatitis C, and, and, and other behavior, other, other um, uh, of, these, of these STDs are linked to sort of the byproduct of what I would consider, and I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this, uh, deviant and aberrant sex, sexual practices. And I think young people, we honor young people when we don't condescend and sort of uh, engage in uh, a euphemistic treatment of, of these issues, but we honor them by saying, hey, here's the risks, promiscuity. Uh, yes, if you're, if you're a young man, if you engage in gay sex, look, there are, there are factors. Gay men are 80 times more likely to contract anal cancer. I think this is, this, we, would, we would do well to have more accurate sex education. And Vicki, I think I've, I've reached the limit here. But, yeah, I, think, I mean, if, if people need to leave, they can okay. just leave, but if you can continue. He's been waiting. I have a few questions. <coughs> Earlier on, you said... How about one, and then let somebody else ask. <laughs> Okay. Earlier on, you had stated that there was never any talk of interracial marriage or sex being a sin. When no, that I mean, is in fact false. And there's do many I, documented cases I, I meant of to convey. being beaten and persecuted just because I'm, they love each other. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I meant to convey the exact opposite. My point was there were people who identified as religious or Christian people who did say interracial behavior was a sin, and they were dreadfully wrong. But that does not correlate but to... what makes you not dreadfully right saying that my loving my boyfriend is a sin? Well, I guess when we, when we die, we're wearing we two different types of polymer, aren't you? you? Women cut their hair. Why aren't they being persecuted the same way I am? Well, that's a, that's a deep question. If you want to follow the Bible, you need to follow the Bible. No. And not judge. No. And love each other. That's the biggest issue. Well, Jesus, when he said to the adulteress, go and sin no more, was that not some form of judgment? Then how about today you go and sin no more and don't judge people? Okay, well, um, I think judging is part of life. We all judge. Um, and my uh, my daughter, no, we do. And but it's I don't say that flippantly. I think judging, judging right from wrong is part of life. And I, and I, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to be flippant when I say I, I seek to agree with God on this issue. I find nothing in the Word of God, that, which I Bible I hold as the Word of God, nothing that would suggest either 
uh, a sort of a innocuous gay identity or affirmation of homosexual behavior. There have been claims by gay theologians, for example, Jesus and John, where uh, Jesus and John were lovers. Uh, the, 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 the Roman, the centurion, uh, you know, and, and his and the man and the, and the younger person he brought to for Jesus to heal. All sorts of claims, but I don't believe they hold up with a common sense, logical reading of scripture. So my question is, um, how can you judge someone else when you are a person who I'm sure said yeah, just absolutely. wished a traffic ticket on somebody <laughs> to get their That was a terrible sin. That was a terrible sin. <laughs> and how can we wait sin? You, me, having homosexual sex, meaning a homosexual is equally as bad as you wishing a ticket on someone. I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but uh, so your point is well taken. Uh, everybody said, and I think this is why Christians have to have humility on the issue. So are you judged? Wait, 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 let me answer this question. We recognize that we're sinners, and therefore we cannot say that I am better than the homosexual who is struggling with his son, his sin. The difference being that I don't take my sins and ask for a pride parade for my sins. I, if I did, I guess I'd. I go to the Luster's Pride Parade or the Gossiper's Pride Parade. I mean, we all have sins. The difference in this issue is homosexual activists don't really acknowledge that they're sinning when they practice homosexuality. And in that case, they, they uh, depart from biblical, the, the, the entire history of the church, going back to Judaism, going back to the Hebrew, uh, all revelation from the Old and New Testament, and even societies that predated that, that were apart from the Judeo Christian tradition. Even when there was homosexual practice, there never was the affirmation of marriage attaching homosexual behavior to, to marriage. That was, you know, in, in uh, some cultures, Greek culture, there were people who were, their boys were mentored by men who engaged in, in, in uh, sodomitic relations with them as part of a mentoring, and then they, and they became adults and they, they, they got married to a woman. So we are in a time of, of I think, this is the most revolutionary departure from from uh, tradition uh, on this issue. Uh, I just wanted to know, do you judge as far as because you don't like a person because they're gay? No, I think you you reach out with it, it, as, a, as a, you know it may seem trite to some. You do love, uh, but I think it's it's one of the closest approximations to what we're supposed to believe. You do love the sin or hate the sin. Do I always love the sinner? Do I always love Dan Savage? Me and Dan Savage, he's a, he's a radical gay activist in Seattle. We go back and forth on Twitter all the time. Um, I try to pray for Dan Savage. Do I always love Dan Savage? No, a lot, of time, a lot of times I have to repent and say, God, you know, heal me of my pride. Help me to, to be loving more. But the truth component cannot be neglected either. The truth component being homosexual behavior cannot be affirmed and, and be considered part of, of righteousness. Um, and so the truth in love, there it's to me it's an attitude of there before the grace of God will go I. I never struggled with this sin, but plenty of others. But again, this is one of the few sins which actually gets sort of a special recognition in the culture, where you actually have every every year pride celebrations centered around this behavior. And I don't believe that's that's really right. And why not? Because I don't think homosexual behavior is anything to be proud of, essentially. All I know is God say, you feel me? Well, God gave us all the freedom. It's not no freedom by man that said freedom of press, freedom of right. No, God gave right. it to all of us. So if they want to do it, you know, you do have the freedom yeah. to speak, yes. you know, and Absolutely. I just can't just be closed minded and be like, well, you can't say that because we're gay and you're straight. No, he got rights. You got rights. You feel me? Y'all can all say what y'all want to say. You feel me? Don't get mad at what somebody is saying. If you don't believe it, you don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. Like you said, it all matters when we die. Because yeah. we only got one judge. We do have free will. And that's it. And, and, um, and we, we pray for people to make the right choices. Um, but we don't force anybody. Right. And, but I think the culture, and that's the culture has turned. I'm thinking that they, that they was kind of, I think that y'all got the influence that he's trying to force y'all to believe his way. Oh, no. I don't believe he's trying to force nobody. He's no, just trying to force anybody. Well, I think this is propaganda, and it's more of you, if I was an influence, a boy that was easily influenced, you would have me walking out of here afraid of being gay and afraid of 
doing those things. And so, you know, it's the same as if um, roles were completely switched. You know, I was in your situation. You have to watch how the message is being delivered. Right. Because this could easy, easily make a child revert or make a child be afraid and feel like God is judging them for being gay. And, they kill themselves or else they start to lash out and do bad in school. I think the message is completely fine, but how it's delivered yeah. can be a tad bit scary to maybe someone who doesn't understand or right. someone who isn't grounded in their beliefs. Right. You know what I'm well, saying? I, yes, I do. And, and, and I, we, you know, we criticize Fred Phelps, the guy with the God Hates Fags message. But I, I, have, you know, I have a theory. I think you could be Mother Teresa and oppose the organized homosexual movement, and, they, and there are people who would say, Mother Teresa is a hater. Sometimes it's just what the message is, I mean, the message being that uh, opposition to the behavior. Uh, but absolutely, and, and uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a terrible crisis what's happening on people, but I, I do think that uh, there's a guy named, um, I'm trying to remember this, uh, this scholar, who studied uh, gay youth, I think his name is Ramafidi. Um, and, um, but that might, might not be right, I'm sorry, but you know, he said that there's a lot of change in ideation from teenagers as they, as, they, as they get older. And I don't think we should get, you know, can think that a 13-year-old, if he says he's gay, if that's necessarily who he is. Would you believe a 13-year-old if he said he was straight? Well, I'm saying there's all sorts of confusion. I would want him to, to think he's straight. You would want him to think he's I, I would want, I, we always want people to pursue uh, what I think, uh, right? Well, Homosexual, natural sexuality. Okay. So keeping sex in marriage between a man and a woman. That's my that's my goal. But um, right now, I think when you have a young person, and, and, and let's face it, the, the gay ideation is is aberrant as opposed to what is historically natural and normal. And so when a 13-year-old girl says, I'm, I'm a lesbian, I'm bisexual, I think there's a political correctness in our culture, which is rushing to confirm her in that identity. And I think sometimes they, they lack facts. And they, and for example, I think ex-gays, there needs to be more word of that, so they know. That's, I mean, uh, seeing a personal story. If I were up here as an ex-gay, I guarantee it would be more powerful, this testimony, because that is somebody who could say he was there. And we see plenty of, of outspoken gays and lesbians and drag queens for Bob, <laughs> um, who are out and proud of their choices, their identity. But then there's a concerted effort by some activists to, to block the airing of politically incorrect things like the ex-gays. You're talking about the media? The media in Hollywood. She's been holding her hand up for a long time. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, because the title of the speech is what the activists don't want you to know, I'm asking if you could kind of put a bow on it a little bit to tell us in a couple sentences what you have told us today, exactly what have you let us know that is what gay activists don't. Okay, one of them is many, many men and women have left the homosexual lifestyle and found freedom and are living happy, contented lives, as opposed to the propaganda, which would be that they're all tortured, uh, hunting, you know, teaching the right handed guy to the left handed. I think another one is that there are many, many serious health risks associated with homosexual behavior, especially MSM, male homosexual behavior, which young people have uh, um, deserve to know. I think another one is that young people deserve to have role models put forth that are not just part of this overall politically correct uh, storyline which celebrates everything gay. I mean, every coming out, Ellen Page, and, and these young people are not here on the other side. And it's not, it, it, there's not a free uh, discussion or fair discussion. I think another one is that the media does us all a disservice by adhering more towards a polemical, euphemistic uh, uh, sort of, and, and very political, covering of this, which sort of bows to the demands of gay activists, who are far more powerful than groups like mine. I'll admit it. I mean, the, the, the CEOs of gay organizations are making over $300,000. There are a variety of groups on, on all sorts of specializations. Gay Lesbian Straight Education Network, Lambda Legal, uh, GLAD, as I spoke of, HRC, Human Rights Campaign, uh, which, by the way, is now pushing for open transsexuals in the military and covering, having the military cover Trans, those transsexual uh, sex reassignment surgeries uh, with our taxpayer dollars. Um, so those are some of the things. Uh, and, and a big one is, I don't believe homosexuality is who you are, certainly not born that way. I believe that the, the, the traditional, the much more ancient understanding of it is, is it's a behavior. 
It's something that people can engage in and then they can leave behind. So far, the gay rights side is winning. In other words, rights, do you have a, do you have a fundamental right to, um, to uh, not be denied business, for example, by that Christian photographer? There are gay activists on both sides, gay advocates, I should say, on both sides of that one. Um, is, is, is marriage between two people of the same sex a fundamental right? Um, so there's a debate over rights, just like there's a debate over all the language. Um, the, the one side is saying it's a, it's, a, it's a natural progression of the civil rights movement. The other side saying it's a revolutionary departure from, from human rights and from even our short history of, of civil rights. Um, there's, you know, there's uh, denying somebody, uh, denying people, mistreating people on the basis of skin color. Skin color is unchangeable. Homosexual behavior, I believe, has it's, it's been shown. People can change their behavior. So I think there's a pro it's problematic just discussing it in terms of a civil rights or human rights uh, context. Is, is there a uh, confusion about um, when we speak of freedom um, and what freedom we're supposed to pursue? Is it the freedom to be able to uh, just do anything that you want, or is it a freedom for, to pursue something greater? Right, and then I think that's where the, the Christian discussion uh, comes in, because um, you know, um, as Christians, we are told to take up our cross. For some people, that may be the struggle of homosexuality. There are people who chase chase lives, who who have those, those the, 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 ten, the tendency, the inclination. They're drawn to this temptation, but they don't act out. They don't practice. And they, and they grow closer to God because of it. And, and we are to pursue righteousness, and we are, and it is a struggle. And we do struggle with sin. And we, we as, as I believe as Christians, or and other people of other faiths, we desire to live uh, a, a life that is closer and closer to, to Christ. We never get there, of course. But we rely on Him to overcome sin. And so, uh, if the discussion is merely about sort of I want to do what I want to do, and, and then you have, of course, because of that discussion, it's now moved to transgenders, where um, they say, I, I, have the, I, want, I have the right as a man who uh, I, I identify as a woman, I have the right to use a woman's restroom, and then you have a battle of rights there, where women say, I don't want a biological man in the woman's restroom. And so what we have is a clash of rights, but I believe that the higher discussion is is to uh, get closer to God. And as I said, I don't believe a case could be made, um, at least biblically speaking, uh, that homosexuality is, is uh, as a positive, proud identity is, is something that's biblical and, and acceptable to God. It's a positive, proud identity as opposed to, it can, of course, there are people who struggle with all sorts of sins in the body of Christ. Uh, yes, I know you touched upon ex-gays for a moment. Uh... How do you feel that the closure last year of the Exodus International Ministries has affected that? Or well, I, I think that the, there are homosexual activists who try to make it seem as if the whole, as they call it, ex-gay industry. If it's an industry, it was the most uh, uh, non-monetized industry in the world. I mean, they just, it was one group. And Alan Chambers, I believe, fell into some bad teaching. Um, and thankfully, there's a new group that's risen up in its place called Restored Hope Network. I went to the banquet, I went to the conference last year in Oklahoma. Um, wonderful testimonies of people, all sorts of, of uh, ways into homosexuality and, and who have left homosexuality. And so there are still many, many ex-gay groups, and that is not the demise of the movement, as people like Wayne Besson sort of tried to suggest. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I just wanted to touch on a point that um, the question I had asked previously about um, 
whether or not you agree with the fact that the media is kind of, I mean, it does it with a lot of things. It, homosexuality is a popular thing right now. I, I agree with that statement, but um, I feel like it kind of um, disagrees with what you just said about the media bowing down just to the homosexuality. As, as it being a popular thing right now, they touch on it a lot. You know, the, uh, well, I, I think it's, it's a variety of factors, but I think they have, a lot of times now, they've taken their cues from the activists. And so, and they've even sometimes not taken somebody who's a conservative, say, let's just say conservative religious, and not put them on the air to oppose a gay activist under pressure from the gay activists. That's what I mean. The media is far more solicitous of gay activists than they are of people like myself. And then now the gay activists come along, not all, again, talking about a certain segment like the SPLC, some groups aren't, even homosexual groups, but and they say, well that's because you represent hate. And so it's a sort of like who you, that's your definition of hate. Why why do you think everybody is going to agree with your definition of what hate is or what love is? And, and so there's these are subjective definitions, but one side certainly has far more power in the media than the other. Uh, Brent, Brent Knight. Yes, uh, he yeah. recently let go. Yeah. That was pretty popular in the news. Does that? Kind yeah, of yeah. I mean, no, that was, and it was covered. And I think there's kind of that's why I, was, I, I should have mentioned that case. There, there's, I think, the, the blowback's coming now, because when you have Bill Maher, and the Brent Knight, if anybody's not familiar, this is the CEO, uh, was the CEO of Mozilla. He actually, well, I think, he invented JavaScript or something. Um, he was a long lifetime. He built the company, and then uh, homosexual activists had discovered, and they actually knew it before, that he made a thousand dollar contribution to help pass Prop 8, which was a, uh, a, an amendment in California in 2008 to define marriage between one man and one woman. They took that one thousand dollar gift that he made, and then later they said he voted for Pat, he supported Pat Buchanan or something, and they did a campaign against him, and under pressure he resigned, I think, because he saw it was, it, was, it was becoming too big. Well, you're seeing even liberal people who are normally on the side of the gay activist movement have now are now heavily criticized. I mean, Bill Maher talked about the gay mafia willing to take down anybody who's opposed to them. You've seen, uh, you know, these uh, you know references which are semi-serious, semi-joking, homo-fascism. You know, the sort of the, this idea that anybody who disagrees with us, we're going to take down. And so, um, I think there is going to be this is this is going to go on for a long time. This idea that the battle between um, gay rights and and religious or moral opposition to uh, the movement. And let me take her script as she has Yes, I'm curious to find out. Um, do you have children? I have five children. Okay, so um, I'm sure they were all grew up in the same household. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. I am curious to find out that what if one of your sons or daughters were a lesbian or uh, gay? Would you love them any less or would you force Christianity on them? No, I would, uh, I would love them curious. just the same. Unconditional love. And... Um, I would urge them not to practice homosexual behavior. Even if it made them unhappy? Well, I think sometimes, like I said, it's a struggle. Life's a struggle. But I get that question all the time. People think, oh, you're... Cause, because they have the presupposition that our side is based on hate and bigotry. They think we... No, no, I'm saying I get that question all the time. And, uh, and uh, that would be a, a very difficult thing in our house, but I would never... You know, the people who kick their kids out and such, I think is wrong. I think you, I would love, I would do the same as I've always done. I would say, I love you. I, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll share with you why I believe this is a, this is not something to embrace. Certainly, don't practice, especially if it was a son, one of my sons. I would share so with him. It's more acceptable. No, not more daughter, acceptable, but son. more dangerous, more dangerous. But practicing homosexual behavior to me is a grievous sin before God. That doesn't mean you don't love your, your son or daughter. Let me tell you a story about that. I had a friend, uh, 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 one of my uh, people who followed our work, her name was Jean, she lived in North Carolina, her brother came out, and everybody in the family kind of went politically correct, and they affirmed his homosexuality as their way of showing that they loved him. She was the only one, she was, a, uh, she was an evangelical Christian, she said, I will never prove your homosexuality, but I will always love you. And ultimately, he ended up confiding in her more than anybody else, because I think he saw that she was being true. I don't think you have to affirm behavior any more so than any other sin in order to show you love somebody. You, you love them 
for, for who they are. And you don't, and I don't believe it's correct to say that somebody's sin is who they are. I think that's a, a, a problem. This idea that it's who I am. I'm just being true to myself. Well, human beings are fallen. We have all sorts of ideas. We, we are tempted. We, we, we are influenced. Some are, some are victimized. And I think there's all sorts of factors that can go to that, that choice. Certainly, never, never reject it. Sure. Thank you. So, what about folks who aren't gay, yet they, they support gays or even friends with them? Does that make them sinners? No. Then what does it make them? It makes them somebody who's a friend with somebody who's practicing homosexuality. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are friends with people doing all sorts of things. But yet you're saying homosexuality is a sin. Yeah. I mean, don't we all have friends who sin? Sure. I mean, what about, what, I mean, do we all know sense to me, sir. I used to drink too much, you know? Um, when I was in college, I wish I had those days back. Uh, so there are all sorts of struggles people have. Um, and, but I do believe, you know, I think it's incumbent upon Christians uh, to share the gospel, to let, it be, to let the truth be told, and not be afraid of, of voicing their beliefs about homosexuality. They don't, have to be, they don't have to hit the guy over the head, but I think we, we need to be bold about that. Doesn't it seem, though, that you're teaching them to be afraid of homosexuals? I that's, that's, that's what I'm getting here. I'm not, I don't see fear. Why is disagreement a way to fear? The whole MSM thing. Well, that's, just a, that's just a CDC category, MSM. What is MSM? MSM is a CDC's category for men who have sexual men. And the reason they have to do that, as we talked about before, is many people don't, uh, don't identify as gay. Especially in the African American community where there's a greater moral uh, prohibition against the behavior. It's because Christianity is um, more heightened in the African American community. It's used as a mechanism of fear. Like you're somewhat using some of your um, quotes and um, references for people who evoke fear. I think maybe you should get your own points and your own references and speak your truth because I don't think you're a bad man as much as some of those people may be. But I think you're equally as misguided as you believe someone who is homosexual is misguided. Well, we'll have to just agree to disagree on that. We will agree. <laughs> a, it's kind of a three-part question. Okay. Uh, you keep saying that, um, you stated earlier that sex between a male and a female was natural. Yes. And uh, as God designed it. That's how God designed it? Did Certainly. He, did he design 1,500 other species to have homosexual acts with each other? Well, I, I believe there's... Besides humans? Well, I, I think there's there's deviancy. Again, uh, there's there's aberrance in every species. Yeah, sure. But does that mean does that mean, you could use the same argument to sort of normalize any practice? Couldn't you? You could say, um, and, and, and some people. I mean, it, there there was incest going way way back. There was prostitution. There were a variety of sins. But I believe there is a, a natural order that that is the idea. Well, you you call behaviors. You're calling them sins. But I mean. There's more to it than saying it's a sin. There's there are hormones being transmitted yeah. there. There's a there's a biological and chemical understanding of the way that people naturally are. Yes. The same way that organisms are in the wild. This can't just be a choice if it's hormones that we you, see you, in the but, wild but, as well. Could we agree that everybody has a choice of how they respond to those stimuli and how how if the sexual choices we there make? There's nothing stronger than a sexual urge when you're in your late teens okay, so or late twenties. I mean, everyone in this room yeah. has experienced that. But let me take the sexual sin substitution test, as I call it. And aren't there strong drives for a married guy who is in, who has a coworker, a woman who's beautiful and he's attracted to, and and those hormones are still going? I mean, there's always a pull. There's lots of different pulls against this. The Christian, I don't know where you're, where, you know, where you are in, with the, with Christianity, but I mean, Christianity is about denying yourself. It's it's not about you know um, subjective conception of what is right and wrong. It's and, and some people, yes, I agree with you. Some people have a great that comparative analogy. Is that's not really that's not a fair one because it's not like I, I'm married and I want my want to have sex with this female over here. It's you're telling me I can't have sex with the only members of the sex that I want to have sex with. Right. That's completely different as opposed to being married. You're, you're basically saying it's immoral to have these natural urges toward other individuals. I, I guess I would quarrel with the term Upon natural, acting on it, natural that's, that's urges good. because if they're natural urges, then that means that something else, some other sexual misbehavior, as I would call it, or sexual sin, to them they would be natural. I mean, it's, it's not a totally flat, I mean, that's not a perfect analogy, but you were saying hormones, 
And, I mean, there are guys who want to have sex with every woman they meet. But there are guys who have a thousand sex partners before they get married. Yeah, how do you think they would feel if you were standing up there saying that they can't, that they shouldn't? That they well, I would, should say, I would say that the ideal is that they not. I mean, that's the thing. We, we want them to, I mean, I said earlier, this is something that I think, you know, deserves more discussion. It's as politically incorrect to say that marriage, sex should be saved for marriage in a faithful marriage, one man, monogamous marriage, one man, one woman. That's as politically incorrect to say that homosexual behavior is a sin. And, and yet that's what a Christian, I believe, Christian is called to do. I mean, marriage, God held it up. And now it's been so worked down that, sure, you can't blame gay activists for saying, hey, we want part of it too. Britney Spears got married, what, after 10 minutes or something? You know, I mean, so of course they see the derogation of the, of, of the marital ethic. It's not the, it's not the marital side, it's the actual act of having sex. That seems to be the problem here. I think it's the fact that a man and a man or a female or a female are having sex that seems to be the problem to the religious agenda. I don't think it's it's that people care about each other and might actually love each other. It's disgusting for those individuals on that side of the argument. For some reason. You, That's why you, we're you think it's mainly a disgust factor? I think that, I mean, I think that this paper that you passed out discussing all these injuries and and Things, yeah, I do think that it is. A battering ram? A battering ram? I'm sure that the millions of homosexuals who are having sex are just hating every second of it. Well, yeah, but sometimes sin is pleasurable. And most women are. are and, and that's written by a gay doctor. I mean, the point is, is that this is, I mean, if you, if you go back, I mean, it's, not, it's not just a Christian thing. Homosexuality was historically viewed as sexual perversion. It was, if you look at the, it's fascinating to look, to go back and look at the early, uh, early constitutional, um, uh, what do you call it, of the, of the states, to see how they describe homosexuality, crime against nature itself. I mean, so, of course now we live in an age where it's sort of being normalized through semantics, but the reason I bring up those facts is to show, look, there's something that's not being discussed here. The difference between male and female is you don't have, you have diseases, but a lot of those diseases are tied to, you know, promiscuous behavior, uh, behaviors that are, that are wrong. I mean, I think it's something that God set it up, and I, we'll only know when we die, but I mean, it's, is it a coincidence that homosexual on homosexual behavior, male homosexual behavior, is probably the most dangerous sexual behavior? Now, Jesus was a friend of sinners, but he wasn't a friend of sin. I think that's the big, that's the big difference. People are sinners. We're not saying they're the only ones who are sinners. We're saying we're all sinners. But the difference is, I don't see um, uh, other pride parades for other sins. So the question, I think, the most, the, the most fundamental question debate, is it natural, is it normal, is it, is, it, is it wrong, is it morally wrong? We're going to have completely different viewpoints on that, but um, I think sometimes the other side uses the cheap trick of saying, oh, it's just those Christians. Well, look, you, you go back to some of the writings. I mean, Jefferson wasn't a biblical Christian, and he wanted to castrate, huh? He wanted to castrate homosexuals. I mean, there was there were far, uh, far greater... Uh, 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 cultural, cultural, uh, cultural uh, resistance to, to aberrant sexual behavior than there is today. Yeah. Now, I, well, I do understand how you oppose homosexuality. I am very, I admire Christians for having such strong faith in something that I can't. I personally would personally believe in the power of pagan like spirituality and work, and actually respecting your earth more than Christianity. But my biggest issue with What's going on here today is the fact that in the Constitution it states there needs to be a separation of church and state. All right. Yeah. Then why is it that every single argument on gay marriage that's is about the, the Bible? Told me that came later. Well. That was, yeah, that's actually. But it is now in the Constitution. It's in no, the, it's not the Constitution. Now, wait a minute. I got to challenge something. You challenged me earlier. First of all, thank you for coming. I appreciate you you coming, not walking out. But um, it's every single argument against. Gay marriage is not the religious. Give me a scientific, political reason why I cannot marry someone I love, even if I don't even fucking call it marriage. I just want to be able to get insurance, visit my boyfriend in the hospital if he is gravely injured without being discriminated against. That is why I'm up in arms about what is going on today. Well, there's nothing I could say. There's nothing I could say that's going to um, satisfy you in terms of an argument, but. I think the history of marriage is relevant, and marriage has never been attached to homosexuality until, I believe, I religion was never attached to politics until but even, we got a government. It was about 
loosely telling you, okay, you two are going to have sex and marry. But marriage, the marriage, marriage was always, but marriage was always different genders. Even when it was polygamous, it was, it was, you know, uh, uh, David. You know, was, well, I just pray that it doesn't come a day where anyone here has to go visit their grand, their husband or wife, and the doctors tell them that they cannot come and see their loved one in the emergency room because they are either not married to them nor related to them. Well, I, I, have, those... I have had to sneak into a hospital to visit to visit someone because I loved them and they were injured. That is a slap in the face to any human. And I think you can say that's wrong. I think you can say that's wrong and still be against homosexual marriage. So I don't think that that, but that that's the thing. suggests that that homosexual right marriage has to be. to be around the people you love and support them. So why is that so bad that I cannot have benefits well, I think and have the ability to visit somebody? Because there are, there are cascading effects. Because if you legalize homosexual marriage, uh, for example. What? Now people are going to marry children and dogs? No, well, let me, really think yeah. that let me fit. I didn't say that. I was going to say that in public schools, young children will be taught that, that homosexual. All, all people are different, and it's nice to respect No, they'll be taught that homosexual marriage is, is marriage. They'll be taught that that, that, they'll be taught that, that is uh, morally equivalent to what I consider real marriage. I was taught that in Catholic school. I went to Catholic school my whole life. <laughs> That, uh, Children in China, are, they learn Buddhism, they learn Christianity. Yeah. Can I say, Peter, how about, Peter, how about we, can I say something? Oh, okay, go ahead. Well, and then we wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. I have gone to two different doctors, and I had to write on there, whoever could hear all about my medical history and visit me and everything, and you can do the same thing right now. Not if their parents disagree. Uh, if they are unconscious, laying yeah. in a bed, and their parents say that I cannot come in that room. If you get all written down and signed by him. If he's unconscious, if he's in a coma, if he was in a car crash and lost consciousness and he's not woken up, I would not be able to go to the hospital and see. Get him to write it down and sign it. I, I don't, I'm not going to predict a car crash, though. Well, no, but if... You know, if you care about him and he cares about you, then do it. Most people my age don't have a living will. I'm, that's just a common thing. If that's a problem, get one. You don't have to get married. You, can, you, can, you don't have to be married uh, to do that. I'd, I'd like to say... Excuse me. I'd like to say that I appreciate the fact that you emphasize the distinction between a person and their behavior. I think that's extremely important. And I don't know why some people don't want to make that distinction, but it's important you can love the person and disagree with the actions. But what I'd like to ask you to do, I think you said that you believe that marriage, that uh, sexuality belongs within marriage between a man and a woman. And I'd, I'd like you to elaborate on that and talk about uh, why you think we even have the gift of human sexuality what it's for, why you think it belongs in marriage between a man and a woman. Well, um, I believe that marriage, and the Bible teaches, is, is a reflection of Christ's love for us as a Christian. I believe that marriage is a beautiful thing in family that God set up to perpetuate humanity. I believe that um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It's not always something that's a feeling. You know, I've been married 25 years. I'm sure that in time when my wife has been very upset with me and hated something I've done and vice versa, but uh, uh, sort of pursuing a love which goes beyond feelings all the time. I think that's another problem with this whole issue is too much, everything is based on feelings. We see it not just, just also in the, you know, people walk out on their husband or their wife because they don't feel like they love them anymore. But I just believe that marriage is one of God's gifts to us it's a picture of Christ's love for us. I am supposed to uh, honor my wife, have grace, She's in, 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 she responds to me. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful <coughs> union that God created that, that produces children, which in itself is miraculous. I don't think everything is, is a mere natural... Uh, you know, I know the naturalists like to talk that way, but I think children are a miracle. And, and I think um, it's a way for us to worship God. And I do think that there has been a level of hypocrisy from the people on, quote, my side, in the sense that, and I, I would take responsibility for this myself as well, if 
if you talk about the homosexual issue separate from that, it's not really right. Because theirs is, a, is one of several deviations from the norm and from righteous behavior. And uh, every, even a lot of Christians say, live with their girlfriend. A guy lives with his girlfriend, then he gets married. And in a way, he dishonors her. Because that's, that also is apart from, from God's plan. It's a wonderful plan. And we would have less diseases, we would have less, less suffering, I think, if we returned to some old-fashioned mores which, which trusted God more. But I think today, a lot of our society has sort of kicked God to the curb. As the psalm says, I think, everybody does what's right in his own eyes, his or her own eyes. And uh, we think we know better than God, but lo and behold, all, all these consequences that we see, we see women being used by men who... They give up sex, and the guy says, hey, you know, he lives with them for five years, and he moves on. And we would all be better off, I think, if we had more respect for, for some of those innocent, old-fashioned, wholesome uh, attributes and, and beliefs that, that used to characterize America, and which today, uh, sort of the secular left sort of scoffs at. And even Christians don't take very seriously. How many Christians, how many times do you hear a pastor talking about sexual sin among heterosexuals? about why it's important, why God wants us to save marriage, you know, ideally for your, for your life partner, and not give it away, and, and not honor, you know, honor him. And of course, abortion flows from that as well. You know, and a lot of, and, and yes, I'll say it, a lot of lesbians were abused by guys. I mean, they were mistreated, and it's sort of, a, I think it's a reaction sometimes, oftentimes, to, to the mistreatment, and, and they, they, there is some, at some level uh, uh, despising of what, how they were treated by men. So I think all these problems are together, and we would do well as a society to sort of humble ourselves and return to that old-fashioned godly ethic, which I think has really been jettisoned for the most part. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you all.